Good morning. Thank you very much. <clears throat> First of all, I want to apologize in advance because my kids are at home. They're on holiday and I hear them next door. I hope they won't storm into this room, but uh, apologize if they if they do in the end. I also wanted to start with uh, with a personal comment. Uh, first of all, because um, we heard the the, the words uh, goodwill and and anxiety, and also John uh, was kind of uh, welcoming the debate, which I think is good. I just wanted to say that um, from from my perspective, some of the the pressure that has been put on the organizers of this event from certain stakeholders has been uh, a bit out of place and excessive. So I really hope that we can have an open and and honest discussion and uh, so really really welcome that in the end we are having this discussion because uh, in in our perspective from from the consumers geoblocking is really is a discriminatory practice that should have no place in a digital single market so a lot has has been achieved so far <laughs> and uh, with the geoblocking in e-commerce although there's still things to iron out as we see a lot has been achieved as well on portability, but there's still this piece of the puzzle of this digital single market that is uh, still missing. And, and, it, and it's a big piece in our opinion. And uh, from our perspective, the main issues really, we can talk about different types of content and we agree not all content is the same. Films, books, music, all they are different, have their specificities. But I would really wanted to focus on the audiovisual services because, from our perspective, this is uh, where main focus should be right now, and where and consumers are facing most uh, problems. Let's say it's uh, it's still the end. I mean, we're at the end of 2020, and consumers are still being blocked when they try to access uh, services uh, cross borders, uh, add audiovisual services cross borders. We think that the this is limiting consumer choice. This is uh, generating frustration among consumers. This is incentivizing piracy, and this is restricting competition. So we we think that the the industry here is holding on to, to a model that is really going against the single. Uh, the only reasoning we we see at the end it's like this is done because it was it's it's the best for business let's say it's a, it's a model that is designed to maximize uh, the profits and i have just a, a recent example from one of our members uh, the norwegian consumer council were telling us that uh, to watch the premier league in their country the rights have been ex exclusively granted to one broadcaster that Premier League is very popular in their country, so a lot of consumers want to want to watch the Premier League, and therefore have to subscribe. The premium package that they have to be able to watch the Premier League is having a forty percent increase in the price, so it's going something from forty-five euros to sixty-three or something like that, which means that for a year the consumer would have to spend around seven hundred and fifty euros to watch the Premier League. They have no legal alternative no choice, there's no competition. So if they want to watch the Premier League, it's either that or turning to illegal offers, let's say. And we think that uh, things would be different and would be better if uh, those consumers could benefit from a real single market. So if they could vote with their feet and perhaps look elsewhere and see if there are other offers that uh, are better tailored to their needs. Now, does this mean that all consumers will go elsewhere? Probably the answer to that question is no, because there are different things. It's not only about uh, the content. You, I mean, you have bundles uh, that you have to give into account. You have uh, local content and adaptations, which consumers uh, still value. So this uh, still will play a, an important uh, role. But does this mean that the whole model will fall apart? Uh, we think that the answer to that question should be no as well, because uh, it doesn't mean that you won't be able to kind of allocate licenses territorially. I mean, we, we are not against territorial licensing. What we are um, advocating for is uh, for, let's say, allow those consumers that uh, want to go elsewhere, so these so-called passive sales, 
to be enabled. The content can still be licensed territorially, but uh, this uh, absolute exclusive territoriality, we think that it's a problem. And it's not only uh, Beog that thinks that it's a problem. We have uh, cases ongoing uh, in, in the European Court of Justice about these issues too. So we also think that um, the loss of subscriptions in one place uh, probably at least partly would be compensated by the passive sales in other places. But um, the question for us is, is twofold. Uh, first of all, there's a lot of discussion about um, demand. Is there enough demand or are we creating a problem that is not there? There were indications already back in 2016, uh, the Federation of German Consumers uh, did a survey that uh, that said that 70% of the consumers they polled were actually interested in in ac accessing um, foreign ad audiovisual services. There was also the Commission survey in 2015. One out of two interested uh, Europeans interested in watching content from another member state. We have recent data that uh, Prabhat was mentioning. So the demand uh, is growing. So. Uh, but there is the kind of the ultimate question that we have to ask ourselves from our perspective is what do we want to achieve here? So I think for us, the goal really is to create a real digital single market that incentivizes access to culture, that incentivizes competition, and that increases consumer welfare and allows consumer to take all the benefits that a single market can really uh, um, deliver. So the single market shouldn't only be about businesses. And um, we think that this is a worthy objective pursuing and um, that the single market has been, let's say, held back for too long uh, on this point. So we see we took the first steps already. We see the European Court of Justice taking the same steps in these directions. So our real question now is like, what are we waiting for, I would say? And I will I will leave it here.